Hey, Fox here, and this is a dungeon. I know Totorak is less popular, but I feel it's more fun. However, that's a justification I can make for another video in the future. Since my first experience here, I understand changes have been made since then, but I can't help but introduce to you today the worst dungeon in Eorzea. This is Arum Vale. There's really nothing special here, so as opposed to my review of Hawk Manor, I can merge both my thoughts and guide you through it in one cohesive flow. And I really do mean there's nothing special. Let's take you to the start of the quest in order to gain access to Aurum Vale, the quest giver, Nedric Ironheart in Vesper Bay, which by the way, does not have a crystal. And he's just tired of hearing your exploits all the time non-stop. So hey, let's just send you to your death and tell you about Aurum Vale instead. Fantastic. Dick. And if you really like that bit of story as to how you got there, getting there is equally as intriguing. And by that I mean it really isn't. Now there are two ways to get there, with one having you to teleport to Fallguard Float and walk all the way west out of the North Shroud, running deep into the Querthes before getting there, so yeah. There's only one way of getting there. So haul ass to Revenant's Toll and exit north, then head west where Willy Elmus unlocks the dungeon for you. But not before he warns you of the stuff inside that could get into your lungs and do some real damage. The kind of fumes that have taken the lives of previous adventurers. You know, the stuff that you'll probably need a mask for. Upon viewing the map, you'll notice that the dungeon is of a simple, linear design, and if you're familiar with some of the videos I've made about this game, you'll know that it's not quite what I prefer, but in this case, it's an actual positive, given how the rest of the dungeon plays out. The primary feature of Arum Vale would be these piss-yellow puddles of gold bile, which is the result of sulfur, mithril ore, and water. These cause extreme discomfort and gradual HP loss when standing on it. I call this a primary feature because the first room, filled with F-stools, Nethernixes, and Lilies of the Veil, are essentially dotted with these puddles. There are vents that shoot out jets of steam that could push players into these puddles. I think when the community talks about this dungeon, this room is the source of all the vitriol. The amount of puddles and enemies with very few safe spots in between leaves such a poor first impression. So good luck positioning your encounters, really. Good luck! <laughs> Past the first area, you'll find yourself in the lock, facing against the locksmith, the first boss. Tanks should expect a hundred lashings melee attack, while all party members should expect a randomly targeted gold dust AoE attack that deals moderate damage. But those are boring attacks. No. The entire party must watch out for the gold lung party wide debuff. Any more than two stacks and you're done. Do your healer a favor and eat a marble fruit nearby to remove the debuff at two stacks. Also watch out for puddles. Or not. You could just wipe and abandon the entire dungeon. Afterwards, you'll find yourself in the banded lid that has one gold vine surrounded by marble seedlings and marble fruit, which upon activation become marble seedlings, so try to take down as many as you can before they sprout. It may seem overwhelming, especially with even more puddles here, but just trust in your DPS and avoid the gold bile. 
Now, the area before the coin counter has dire mites, wasps, bats, and bane mites. Some are patrolling back and forth, but it's possible to just sneak through the middle with a bit of coordination and take down the creatures guarding the entrance. Now, the coin counter isn't too bad of a boss. Good open arena, one conal attack, one circular AoE. I have the Beholder's a semi-conal AoE. There's also a glower attack that targets a random player and inflicts paralysis. And I say it isn't too bad now, but before a recent patch, a lot of these attacks were not telegraphed. Personally, I didn't have a problem with this fight the first few times I tanked for it before the 5.3 patch, but the fact that this had to be nerfed is a little concerning. The Empty Pocket has some enemies that are essentially speed bumps, and by Lake is more or less the same as previous areas but with more seedlings, which turns this into another DPS race. And all this leads to Miser's Mistress, the final boss of the dungeon. The fight works similarly to the Locksmith. The Mistress casts a party-wide debuff, Hook Burrs, which causes small damage. Its big attack is the infamous Bad Breath AoE, which inflicts Paralysis, Silence, Poison, Slow, Blind, Heavy, an HP penalty, and Determination down. And if your healer goes, it's a wipe. So do them a favor and eat some fruit to get rid of any of these debuffs. At some point, it will sow seedlings into the fight, so take care of those before they hatch. Oh, and it's a little tight here, you know, with all the gold bile around, so good fucking luck, ass. And that's it. You've finished Orm Vale. Unlike Hawk Manor, there is no compelling side story. Willy Elmus just tells you that other poor suckers ventured into these caverns looking for actual gold. These adventurers found nothing but monstrosities and toxins. Those more capable only found a dead end. There are no notes, no equipment left by previous adventurers, nothing. Except for the 87 puddles of gold bile scattered throughout the dungeon. Yeah, I counted. I'll break it down too. There's 32 in the first room, 17 with the locksmith, 13 in the banded lid, 4 before the coin counter, 5 inside the coin counter, 3 in the empty pocket, 2 in the bile lake, and 12 to avoid in the miser's hold. For a holdover dungeon from 1.0, this dungeon is soulless and merciless, especially for incoming greenhorns that may stumble into this quest, but that's the thing. The saving grace of this whole ordeal is this icon. It is born out of a side quest. While the dungeon itself is a dick up the ass, the devs have shown us mercy. So if you encounter the quest name going for gold, do yourself a favor and Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want more FF14 content. You have been warned, there are no guarantees. <laughs>